Hey there guys, welcome to another episode of Rebbe Fett, and uh, we're here to obviously uh, review um, the big, the BFG. No, of course, we're gonna, <laughs> we're doing uh, Ghostbusters. Oh, by the way, everybody, um, this is my girlfriend, Heaven, uh, so she's going to be reviewing the movie with us today. Um, and two things I want to go over before we uh, talk about this. One, um, I know there's been a lot of extreme views on this movie, so I literally, we're just coming at it from a cinematic uh, perspective. We're just looking at it as a movie, <laughs> and that alone. Um, two, we have a pet rabbit in here, and it's probably gonna be making some noises from here to there, so you're just gonna have to excuse it. All right, so let's get into this. Let's get into what we thought about Ghostbusters, uh, the reboot. I just wanna get into what I thought was good, what I thought was bad, and what I thought was ugh. And what completely left us, like, clueless. All right, so let's start off with the female cast. That seems to be the big thing that everybody wants to talk about. I honestly, I didn't think that they took anything away from the movie. I didn't think there was anything wrong with having a, a full female cast. Um, what I thought was wrong was the writing in the movie. Uh, I don't feel like these ladies got a good enough chance to be able to uh, execute, you know, a good enough uh, performance based off of what they had to, ha what they had, you know, to go off of. Um, but yeah. I, honestly, I think that all of them are very talented and they all have uh, some very uh, good quirks to them. Honestly, I really, I did like Kate McKinnon's character. I thought that she was very uh, eccentric, very uh, weird and interesting. So I did like her character. What'd you think? Well, I know going into it beforehand, everybody was kind of worried with an all women uh, cast that it was going to be overly feminist, but I didn't get that feeling from the movie whatsoever. Um, there were a few jabs at men in particularly, but I didn't really feel like they were like the stereotypical people like to worry about feminists being like oh, we're the superior sex yeah and we do everything better i mean there wasn't any of that but in the same token like she said um it did seem like every male character in the movie was either a complete idiot or like just a scumbag like <clears throat> someone you just would not like like and you know i just or i felt a like complete weirdo yeah like think. a complete weirdo like <laughs> i just feel like that was unnecessary right like you know, and I almost felt like that was a little bit of a jab to like the people that like uh, didn't, you know, like that the people that were ragging on the movie, the director was like, well, I know I'm just having a little jab at the audience there. Yeah, so the female cast really didn't bother me. What bothered me is a lot of elements in this movie. I felt like it could have been really good. Um, I honestly don't see why it was a complete reboot. Basically, uh, the you know, if you're not aware, the other Ghostbusters movies didn't happen apparently in this universe and there's this is a whole new restart however they have tons of cameos from bill murray to they uh dan Aykroyd. everybody in it yeah and they really did and um it, it was just you know like i didn't understand uh why they just wouldn't have it in the same universe there was no reason to reboot it, it actually took away from their franchise took away from the story um, and this is, you know, a very successful franchise, one that you should pr pay tribute and homage to. And I feel like to like Sony, they were just like, oh yeah, we got the rights to Ghostbusters. We're just going to do it where whatever we want. We're just going to slap whatever we want on there. We're just going to throw money at this thing and hope it turns out okay. And it would have yeah. flowed a lot more. It would have made a lot more sense to just create it as like. Oh, the older cast, kind of, they got older, they grew apart, and they disbanded because they got too old for the work, and then either, you know, this new group, or this new generation decides to take up the task of being the Ghostbusters, or it could have been the daughters of the original members. Yeah. That would have been a lot more interesting to watch. Yeah. Than and I mean, like, the, the original leader of the team, Bill Murray, plays, like, a character in this. I mean, he's in it that doesn't believe in ghosts and ends up getting killed <laughs> yeah, by being thrown out of a window. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's really crazy is, as far as I can remember, nobody really gets killed in the original Ghostbusters. So I didn't know how I felt about that. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, and 
you know, it was just, why even have the original cast members in it at all? Just yeah, so we can be like, 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 oh, we know you, yeah. but you're not associated with the Ghostbusters. I mean, it, there was just almost, there was uh, no point to do that. Um, but anyway, as far as the ghosts go, okay, uh, you know, in the past, when you've watched Ghostbusters, some of the ghosts are pretty scary, pretty goofy, uh, you know, a little bit of both. And I gotta say, the first two ghosts that they have in this movie are really scary. They're, I, I, and not even just scary, but just, you know, cool. I, I like them. Either. Yeah. And then they have this demon looking Scooby Doo haunted mansion crap freaking come into the movie. And ever since, like, after that happens, after the Ozzy Osbourne cameo that doesn't really make sense, it, it all just goes awry. Just after that, um, I know Heaven really liked the the Macy's Day Parade uh, cameo in the movie of the ghosts, but I didn't even really care for that, especially because they had the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man in it, and it was like, why? It was so forced, you know what I mean? The Stay Puff. First of all, yeah, it was supposed to be of like you know a Macy's Day Parade that happened back in the 1900s or something, and then it's like, okay, well, why would they have a Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, and and then. Even Slimer, like they had Slimer in the movie and you love Slimer, you associate him with Ghostbusters. I was glad to see he's back, but he, he was even really forced in the movie. And then they had a girl Slimer for some reason. Yeah, he was totally just, you know, riding around town. Yeah, with a, he <laughs> with found a girl, girl Slimer. Yeah, for and some that reason. that was him the whole, the whole night in that movie. Was... Yeah, it just, it, it really, it really didn't make sense. Um, another thing that kind of bothered me but I also liked, I really, really liked Chris Hemsworth's character in this Kevin. He is very funny. However, they make him so stupid that it's impossible. Like, nobody is this stupid. Like, it is just the suspension of, of disbelief in this movie is just paramount. I mean, like, you, no one's that dumb, you know? Like, it, it kind of bothered me. Like, they made him that stupid. Like, he, he didn't understand that he couldn't put his hand through a fish tank at one point. He's still super hot, though, so... Yeah, and that was that was pretty much the thing. It's like, oh, well, we hired him because he's, he's pretty, eye candy. but he's yeah. dumb. Let's talk about how fast they upgrade the gadgets in this movie, because it's kind of ridiculous. Like, seriously, like, they're, like... Like, one scene, they'll have one gun. The next scene, they have a freaking have backpack like already. We laser cannons. Oh, I just built this... <laughs> this fist-punching, like, freaking ghost, like, that shocking device. <laughs> You know, I have a ghost grinder now. You know, like it was like ridiculous. Like she was she just, just like, like pulled him out of her butt or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, and like oh look at this. <laughs> none of them are employed, so I would just love to know where they're getting all their ghost gadget stuff. Um, you know, like I don't, and it, you know you can tell that there's no like real like lapse of time in this movie. So anyway, um, Leslie Jones character, I liked her. She's so and it. I felt like they could have done more with her though. I, I honestly, I feel like the writing for her on a lot of parts was lazy. Like Michael K. Williams' uh, character in the original Ghostbusters, he kind of kept everything grounded. Like everybody else was all into their science stuff and he was kind of like, you know, I'm just a regular guy out Ghostbusting. And that's what I liked about him. Uh, you got a lot more from him, you know, for, from the writing they did for him. That was another thing is that, you know, uh, Dan Aykroyd and uh, Egon, I can't think of his name right now, um, they really put their heart and soul into writing the Ghostbusters movie, and you could just tell that they were just kind of just going with the fact that they had the franchise on this, and that's what I just really didn't like. Um, I did like going back to um, Leslie Jones' character. I like that her character kind of seemed to be like the only one they kind of did parallels to. Yeah. Like, she worked in the subway or she worked in the subway station and they have her on the tracks and then there's the ghost that scares her and the same in the older movies he's on the train tracks and the train comes through and scares him so they kind of redid that whole scenario I thought that was pretty cool how they remade that let's talk about the bad guy uh -huh. I just didn't I didn't understand what they were thinking with him, I mean, first of all, he ex like every time you see him, he's explaining his plot. What? Like no. Like second off, like somehow the Ghostbusters figure out where he is and what he's been doing the whole time. Like they figure out that he's the bad guy without ever really 
figuring out that he's the bad guy. They just went along with it. Yeah, it was like really ridiculous. Then, you know, he kills himself and then he gets like superpowers after killing himself. I mean, I'm sorry, but it doesn't seem to really work that way. I mean, why hasn't, why don't all the ghosts have the powers he has? And like, why yes. isn't everybody who's killed His themselves? His powers are like absolutely ridiculous. They just, yeah, they just never really explained why he has the powers he has. Honestly, guys, the first half of the movie was okay. The second half of the movie was just, uh, it was kind of like a chore just sitting through it. It was like, ugh, like what are they gonna do now? And um, I didn't like, you know, half the jokes in it. I felt like half the jokes in it were just like, you know, Melissa McCarthy, you know, ad-libbing, and then, you know, uh, Kirsten Wig would try to ad-lib, and then they'd have ad-lib wars, and they just, just like, well, we'll just keep that in the movie. You know, basically, like, you know pe parents are bringing their kids to this, and it was just like, they had like the freaking queef joke. <laughs> beginning like oh yeah I, this is a fart noise oh yeah it came from the front you know what i mean i was just like oh really right now the queef jokes like what what's going on in this movie you know i gotta tell you they just did not do a good job of marketing this movie the, the trailer and then going actually seeing the movie the movie is a lot better than the trailer like i don't know what they were thinking with the trailer but all i can tell you is here's a picture of the theater there was nobody in there it was just us and like a security guard lady that sat in for a few minutes and walked out like seriously like we were pretty much the only people watching the movie and like well also in the trailer there's like the music like they redid that one song that's yeah. literally the whole soundtrack it's just a bunch of remixes and remakes of the same song yeah it's all just <laughs> dun, 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 and then there'll be a slower one bun, bun. And then a slow one. The old, the old ones, like, oh man, like, I love, for some reason, I feel like a lot of people are dumping on Ghostbusters 2. I actually really like Ghostbusters 2, and both of those movies have great soundtracks, you know? Like, I, I freaking, like, love the songs from that. Like, I love, like, got to take control. Yeah, we got, we got. And they were, like, in the Statue of Liberty. I freaking love that, man. Um, and it's just, there's so many artists out there that would have loved to have been like, yeah, man, we'll make some Ghostbusters songs for you guys. That would be awesome. Like, uh, I think it was that Bobby Brown that did that back in the day. Like, you know, you know that there would be some Bobby Browns today. would be like, yeah, I'll make some awesome music for you guys. Oh my gosh, guys, product placement in this movie. Freaking, like, every time I turned around, I felt like we were getting something else shoved in our face. And Sony itself, I'm not kidding. When we went and sat through the previews, it was all Sony movies. There was no other yeah, previews. Yeah, like Sony's just stuff. shoving it, like the <laughs> fact that Sony made this movie down your throat. Everything that, from the camcorders that they used in this movie to Times Square. It's like Sony, Sony, Sony. It's like, okay, we get it. I mean, like seriously, like Sony needs to, they have no chill. They need to chill it at the end when he turns into the giant ghost thing. Like why? <laughs> You were in Kristen's <laughs> worth body. It was working awful. great for you. Yeah, like the stupid ghost. Thing. I didn't understand. I didn't understand what it was made out of. It was like half Stay Puff, half the ghost. This thing, he just turned into no, it. Even it was though literally just a giant ghost like this. Yeah. With, like evil eyes. But he was like made out of marshmallows, pretty much. Like that's what they. The material. It looked like he was made he out of. He reminded me. No, he reminded me of the boogeyman from the Nightmare Before. Yes! Oh <laughs> my gosh, yes! I was <laughs> thinking about that, I was like, what? He looked just like He it. did, he looked like Oogie Boogie! Oh my god, he looked like Oogie Boogie! It was freaking Oogie Boogie at the end! He was like gonna start singing his song, like, what's his song? What's his song? I'm the boogeyman! <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get you, whatever. Like, oh my gosh, that's, I was like, yes! That's so perfect, yes. Well guys, I, I just wanna say, you know, I feel like this movie is kind of a slap in the face of the franchise because, you know, Ghostbusters deserved a really good sequel, a really good written thing, and I feel like the way they wrote this, it just it just didn't happen. And the, what they did with all the cameos, it was just kind of a slap in the face, killing off Bill Murray, making, uh, you know, uh, the characters not be themselves, uh, not showing any reverence or any like acknowledgement that the other movies happened. I mean, I don't know what they were thinking. People were going there because they want to see the Ghostbusters. They want to see the franchise. I love Ghostbusters, guys. I love one and two. I love the cartoon. I had the toys. You know, I had the one where like 
the, you had the cartoon Egon and like his like chest popped out or whatever. I had the Ghostbusters car. I had it all, guys. And I loved it. I freaking loved it. It should have just been like carrying on like these ladies carried on the legacy of the original yeah. Ghostbusters. And honestly, I was shocked at the end of this. They think they're a freaking Marvel movie or something. They have an after credit scene setting up the next movie. I'm like, guys, this movie did so bad. You know you're not making another one right. You know that's not going to happen. I, I thought it was a very bold choice to, to set up a sequel. I really did. Because, like, seriously, not just that, but you're just redoing a franchise that didn't need to be redone. It just needed to be added on to. Like, seriously, they could have done it so great, guys. It, it didn't matter. They could have had this awesome female cast. That didn't matter. That's not the problem. The ladies in this movie, they're not the problem. They're funny, talented actresses. I've seen them in other movies that have made me bust a gut, you know? Even the director who made Spy and made Bridesmaids, those movies are great, hilarious movies. I just, he got lost in this movie. He just did, and they just, they just decided they just want to do whatever they want, and they had to be different in certain ways, and when I did, I just it just didn't work out. I will say though that if you want to go see a movie that's good laughs, then you should go see this movie. Yeah, guys, just don't take it, it too seriously. I I wouldn't even say go see it. Not... I would say maybe just wait for it to come on stream. I'm not I'm not telling you not to watch it. You know what I mean? But just. You know, watch it when you can watch it when you stream it or get it from Redbox or something like that. Because I, it's definitely not a $15 go see a movie, but you know, it's it's not terrible. It's not an atrocity like everybody was acting like it was going to be. I think that's about it. Um, so what would you give this movie out of 10? <laughs> oh man. I guess I would, I would give it a solid 5 out of 10. It had a good base. <laughs> they had a lot. They had a lot of good potential there, and a lot to work with. I just feel like they missed the bar on that one. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna give it. You're gonna give it. Hmm. Five. Yeah, five. I would have to go one, one a little bit lower, probably like a four, just because I just feel like there was just so much stuff they missed with this movie that they could have done right. You know. So I'll probably give it four out of ten. Um, I'm sure that. Eventually, it will be for free on Netflix or HBO because it's one of those kinds of movies. So, just wait for it to come out then. Absolutely. Uh, guys, I just want to thank you for watching. Uh, as always, you know, like, comment, rate, subscribe. We want to know what you thought of the movie in the description box below. Hopefully, you didn't watch my review without seeing the movie because we didn't want to spoil everything for you. But, um, yeah, if you don't care, then that's, that's up to you. Um, but, yeah, if you guys liked the video, make sure to drop a like. Always subscribe, guys. I, you know, if you're new to the channel, I'm always coming out with new content. So, uh, just look forward to that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. appreciate all the comments you leave, everything you do. I really do appreciate you guys. Um, as always, stay awesome. Keep those Punisher hats on. And I'll see you later.